everyone. We're just gonna wait a couple of minutes until we get everyone on, but I wanted to welcome you all to the New Balance store and thank you for tuning in today. Uh, so we have a bunch of things that we're gonna be talking about over the next half hour. Uh, we have um, a foot scan that's gonna be happening and a lot of you, I hope you've been following posts and seeing that we have a giveaway going on. So just some giveaway rules. Keep in mind that you need to share the post and uh, you need to follow Podman Adventures and New Balance. Go ahead and tag both of us on the post. And then in order to be entered, you wanna go on the post, you wanna comment shoes, and you wanna tag two people. And you can have up to 10 entries. So the uh, contest is gonna be going on for another week. So next week, Sunday, at the end of our next go live, we'll be going, going ahead and announcing the winners. And, um, and then we'll see who, who the winners are. So there's tons of prizes. Three people are gonna get the Trek shirts that you're gonna see Jonathan wearing in a little bit. Two people are gonna get a week's supply of New Balance socks. And then the grand prize winner gets a foot scan that you guys are gonna be able to see and a free pair of New Balance shoes. So it's a pretty sweet deal. Um, not that much that you guys have to do. So get those posts in. We wanna see you comment, tag, and, and share the posts. So, Without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and introduce Jonathan. Hey guys, Hello. Uh, Jonathan here. I'm here with uh, Jenny with uh, New Balance. She's uh, been with the company for a little over 19 years yeah. and has a big wealth of information that she wants to impart with us today and is going to be navigating us through the foot scan that you guys can possibly come to the store and do. And as uh, Shelby was saying earlier, one grand prize winner is going to be able to come into a New Balance store, do the foot scan, and get the perfect fit shoe for them. So, Jenny, tell me a little bit about your experience over these uh, 19 years and, yeah. and why uh, the right fit is so important to you and, and working with the shoe as well. Yeah, so I think I love what I do. I mean, I've been a tech rep, I've been a sales rep, I've worked with a lot of podiatrists over the years, and one of the things I noticed is that when we get the RX prescriptions from the podiatrist, a lot of our store people didn't understand what metatarsalgia meant, what plantar fasciitis meant, and it really became a passion of mine where I wanted to help the stores kind of complete that circle of care with podiatrists. Uh, so I put together a whole training program. Um, so now all of our 185 stores um, that have the foot scans um, can really understand when you guys write, you know, I want a roomier fitting shoe for a brace or someone's recovering from arthritis or from surgery, they'll understand what you guys are talking about. Right, and, yeah. and I thought, uh, you know, you're really into sports. Yes. So um, <laughs> one of the really cool things that's important for us too is that, uh, you know, we also have patients that are, you know, sports enthusiasts, you know, people right. that run, people that are, you know, ultra marathoners, uh, hiking, biking, and crossfitters, you know, crossfitting yeah, <laughs> as well. And so, um, you know, talk about, you know, why fit matters for those patients as well, or those right. athletes. So one of the things I like telling people is that it's so important to get annual footwear measurements. And I'll give you a little story of a, a friend of mine who actually came to the New Balance San Francisco store. And his wife said, oh, he was tripping over his feet. Um, he didn't believe he was a wide. He didn't even know that shoes came in wides. Oh, wow. So we'll, we put him on the scan, which Jonathan will do in just a few minutes, and he found out that he was a 12 extra wide instead of a 13 regular. Oh, wow. So <laughs> it's really important to check your foot every year, and so I find that um, a lot of times people don't realize your foot size can change over time because of age or you know, health-related issues, whether you start exercising a lot in the new yeah. year, or whether you haven't exercised because you've been too busy studying for the boards yeah, or yeah. seeing Got patients that coming up next. or yeah. you know going skiing and whatnot yeah. it's so important to make sure you're in the right size and width because the shoe is only going to bend in a certain spot and if your foot is not bending where the shoe is bending it can create more injuries and issues and then your patients will come back and seeing you all the time yeah. So that's why we really make, it's very important at New Balance that we really communicate with podiatrists. One of our biggest um, responsibilities at our stores is to make sure that we have a very strong relationship and partnership with the podiatrists. So, so a lot of the younger podiatrists and the podiatrist students, I always say, you know, get a few specialty stores that you really feel comfortable with, that you know that you can communicate with them and they'll communicate with you to really help that patient. Because you really want to help that patient and you know, make sure they're not in pain. 
Yeah, so I think it's like really important that you're talking about you know, the partnership and you're building yes. that program so that there's this big continuum of care. And I know that you, a lot of this you're talking about fit. So tell me about why the foot scanner and why is it so important to have in the store and what uh, benefits it has for it. And then, you know, can yeah. you show me what it's all about? Yeah, so we're going to kind of look over at this really innovative 3D volumetric scanner. So a lot of times people ask me, well, what's the difference between this volumetric scanner and a gate now and the analysis? And a gate analysis is only as good as that person's eye, and it's kind of a little subjective. Right. What you think is a fallen arch is a little different than what I might think. So this is a really high-tech, you know, thousands of dollar scanner that gives you a really cool three-dimensional um, picture of your foot. So it's really important to see what foot is longer, what foot is wider, what arch is higher, um, and that way you can really make sure that your foot shape uh, matches the shoe shape. That is ultimately the most important thing to do. Because a shoe can have the best um, technology, but if it's not fitting your foot properly, right. especially if you're diabetic, right, and you have neuropathy and you can't feel anything, yeah. we don't want to create even thicker hot spots. Right. So to get this wonderful thing started, it only takes about 30 seconds. Cool. We're going to have to slip off your shoes. Right. You'll roll up your pant legs halfway up your calf. And then we'll stand in between the squares, and you're not going to move for a whole 30 seconds. Uh-oh. And again, you guys, we want to make sure we do this every year. So you have to stand still. I'm going to hit the button for you. And, you know, it's really important. One of the things that we discuss with customers is that you always want to measure for the longer foot and the wider foot, right? And you also want to know, you know, sometimes customers will have a higher arch versus a lower arch on one foot versus the other. So you can um, step off now, and we're going to put our shoes back on. And while Jonathan's putting his shoes back on, we're going to kind of swing back over here. And we're going to kind of have a sneak peek of his scan before he gets to see it. And what you can see is, and he already knew this, because um, he had his foot measured, is that his left foot is longer than his right foot. And we do it in millimeters because it's a little bit more accurate, but you can also see they did it in US sizes. So his left foot is measuring a 10. His right foot is measuring a 9.25. And he already knew this, his left foot was a medium width, his right foot was a wide. Now keep in mind, it's really important to know that we have six different widths, right? So we have narrow, medium, wide, extra wide, and extra, extra wide. And again, annual form measurements are important because your width can change as well as your size. Right. Okay? So you correctly noticed that your um, left foot was longer and your right foot was a little wider. Yeah. So as we discussed, that means that when you try on your shoes, you're going to check for the left foot standing, right? You don't want to, one of the biggest misconceptions is people are sitting down yes. and then they're trying to check their, um, you know, whether their toes are hitting the end. Our toes should never hit the end of the shoe, right? <laughs> never. never. Um, so you want to stand up, kind of kick your heels back and then check it. T typically you want a specialty store. Um, and the specialty staff to check it for you, right? These self-service places, they don't typically have the staff that right. will help you kind of fit yourself properly. Well, I know that's a big yeah. problem for me because I, I always knew that my left foot was a little bit longer than uh, my right. right, so it's always a very hard time. I have a really hard time yes. buying shoes just online because I end up having to buy like three different sizes and right. bring them all in. And so uh, finding the right fit for me is really important. And I've worn the Minimus for a number of years now because they're my favorite shoe because they're the most flexible. Um, so tell me about, yeah. does, this, does this give you um, suggestions of shoe types? Or? It does. So what's really cool is that you can see that your right foot is really high arch and you can see that I'm panning it around so I can show him that that's his right foot arch, and then I'm gonna show him that his left foot arch is a little bit flatter. And then what's cool is I'll hit this little dude out over here, and then it's gonna show him, based on his arch type, which is a higher volume, which shoe has that characteristic, mm. all right? And what I liked about how you already fitted yourself for the Minimus is that you're matching your shoe shape with your foot shape. So you notice that your foot flares out a little bit. Oh yeah. What's really cool about New Balance is we have over 40 different shoe shapes or shoe lasts. And so that's why it's really important to know, do you have a narrower heel? Do you have a foot that flares out? And people that tend to like Minimus have that flare. So you already knew, but a lot of times people don't stop and think. And so we really tell customers when they say, okay, well, how long does the scan take? 
Well, the scan only takes about 30 seconds, but it's really important to work with the staff to kind of drill down and see, okay, do you like a softer midsole? Do you like a roomier fit? Do you like a glove-like fit? Does your foot flare out? Is your foot more square? Is your foot thicker or is your foot more low body? Well, do you yeah. want to show us maybe some so, of them? So, yeah. Kind of explain it to us? So we're going to walk down to the next level. We're going to showcase all the really fun shoes. And we're going to really explain um, all the different kind of fits and types. One of the things that you want to keep in mind is that if you're really into fitness, you'll want to rotate your shoes. So a lot of times I find that people will um, buy shoes and then they'll wear them until they're dead. Right? Oh, yeah. I, 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 I do that, I right? Do that, yeah. right? And we hear that from a lot of customers. The better thing to do is to buy two pairs of shoes and rotate them so that the, the foam has time to kind of have some breathability and give you more shock absorption. Oh, yeah. So one of the things that you want to remember is that when you run, it's three to four times your body weight of force when you're running. Right. So if you're using the exact same shoe over and over again, that's not good. You bet it's better to have two pairs of shoes and rotate them. So what I'll do is on Monday, uh, Wednesday, Friday, I'll have my red pair. And then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I'll have my blue pair. Well, and especially yeah. if you're, you know, working out a lot yes. and you're a sweater like I am, yes. uh, you end up with really bad, stinky shoes yes. you know, really quickly. So I know that I have to keep a couple of pairs uh, myself, you know, in order to kind of rotate them so that, you know, they don't get like really bad. Right. Yeah. So let's walk over the shoe wall. And um, this has done a really good job kind of showcasing our top the line shoes at the very top. So when we talked about the upper material, this is one of our top of the line shoes. It has a hypo knit upper. So you can see that it's um, very flexible, but very supportive at the same time. And it has an ultra heel. So for Jonathan's higher arches, we basically have three different arch types, right? There's the higher arch. So let me go back to, we had the high arch, medium arch, and low arch. And this isn't just for New Balance, right? In every single brand, that's how they categorize shoes. They don't really explain that to people as well, right. um, but it's important to know your arch type, right? So we now know, very important to know your exact width. So when you're trying to shop for shoes, you don't want to just buy a narrow or a wide, because wide is not as uh, right. accurate as like, a wide, like a D width or a 2E width or 4E width. So something um, flexible like this will kind of give right. your foot room to grow. Right and you know, kind of yeah. be a little bit more flexible. And if you have things that, uh, patients, some patients might have things like hammer toners or things yes. like that, so this will be a lot more uh, forgiving. forgiving for so them, yeah. a lot of times people ask us, why is this shoe so expensive? Because it has the top of the line upper materials and the top of the line cushioning. So basically you have three categories of shoes. Neutrals for the high arches like Jonathan, and in our line, that's the 80s, so 1080s. We have the fresh foam. So here's a really good example of, this is for a roomier fit. So okay. if we had seen that Jonathan had a really meaty, thick foot, you don't want to try to smash it into a more glove-like fitting shoe, right? You want to look for a more roomier fit. And again, keep in mind that a lot of brands only have like three to four different shoe shapes or shoe last. The New Balance has over 40. So you said last, and what does yeah. that mean again? So last is just the three-dimensional shape. So if you went to the New Balance factory, you'd actually see these wooden um, foot forms that the shoe is, the upper material is stretched over to give that shoe its three-dimensional shape. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's cool. So we just, we kind of, instead of saying last, we just say the three-dimensional shape because, yeah. again, we see a lot of customers that just try to cram that pink shoe that looks really cool into their foot that maybe doesn't match the shoe shape. But again, if you had a square, Foot, right a more square foot then you're looking for a more square shoe right and if you had a really high volume foot then this shoe has a lot of high volume to it it's a more mushroomy shape so if you think of like um, you know fitted jeans versus like relaxed fit jeans that's the kind of the same idea gotcha. when I'm trying to explain to people last sometimes they look at me like yeah, well, what, what are you talking last? about yeah. but I'm talking about you know what feels the most comfortable on your foot right you can't be super loose and it can't be super tight yeah. So do we have some questions from the... Okay, cool. All right. And then um, we also have um, medium arches, right? So we have the high arches, the medium arches, which is myself. And you want a little bit more stability in the stability shoes. So in, in our line, it's anything with the 60s, okay? And you can't see this, but this is typically a firmer um, density of uh, foam. 
and that helps you from rolling over. So if you think of um, a foot that's a little bit of an over pronator, you want it to slow down. So think of a ramp, um, and that's what this little midsole is doing. It's um, slowing you down from rolling over or over pronating. So for, yeah. for patients that are for athletes, what athlete is going to benefit the most from that? So someone that when we put them on the scan, they have either a, a medium arch or a low arch. So someone, so when you say um, over pronation or motion control, that's because that foot is moving a lot. So like a pes planus foot, right? Or someone with really hypermobile joints needs a little bit more support. Right. We put them... Um, in a stability shoe that has a little bit of a medial post. Right? So we have this 860, we also have the Vongo. So again, we've done a good job of hiding. So in the past, we used to put a, a darker coloring, oh, yeah. and people didn't like that because it didn't look so fashionable. Yeah. So now we've kind of hidden it, um, but it has a great amount of stability. Uh, and it has this, yeah. this really good flexibility because you know a lot of, a lot of patients have braces, or yes. they might have the orthotics uh, that kind of take a little bit of space. You know? So it sounds like uh, they've built in a lot of give for those things. Yeah, they've really done a good job with these higher end shoes, especially in the fresh foam category, of really thinking of, okay, the midsole saddles where you want to have the support, but really giving a little, a lot of um, breathability and just, you know, comfort around the ankle collar. A lot of times people will have a lot of, um, you know, irritation in the ankle collar, so they've done a lot of research to make sure that that ankle collar is not going to hurt them. So we'll move down the line. Um, you can see, again, this is the more glove-like fitting shoes in the neutral category. And again, if we see someone with a lower volume foot, uh, then we'll put them into that, okay? And then as we move down the line, uh, we can see that we're moving into the trail shoes and the minimus yeah. shoes, right? So here's where we want to talk about something called heel-to-toe drop. So now we have the width, right? Very important to know. Um, your sizing, you never want your toes hitting the end. But the heel to toe drop is basically how much the shoe um, starts from the heel to the toe. So in the more minimal shoes, we have a four millimeter drop, which is pretty flat, barefoot. So like when you're doing your CrossFit, your lifting, you don't want it pitched too far forward because then you can't get that right technique. So really right? grounded. Right, so you need to be as flat as possible. So this is a four millimeter drop. And then if we went back to some of these other shoes, this is like an eight millimeter drop. So that essentially is meaning eight millimeters taller from here to here, okay? So, well, why is that important? Why is it so important for both podiatrists and consu consumers to know about heel to toe drop? Because if you had like tight Achilles or if you had manitrosalgia, you wouldn't want to be putting so much pressure on the forefoot or dragging that Achilles down. Right. So really knowing that heel to toe drop is important. That's great. And, and so, the foot scan is something that helps with that as well. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, but if you could, you know, in your practice or if you see anybody with all of these injuries, it's really important to note that so that the store um, will make sure to put them either on a taller heel to toe drop. So like this 880, right, um, is kind of our workhorse in the neutral category. That's a 10 millimeter heel to toe drop, right? Um, and this uh, fresh foam, it has a tall stack height, so tall midsole height, but it's a four millimeter heel to toe drop with a four foot rocker, right? So if someone has arthritis or things like that. So a lot of these things, if you can specify what the patient has, it can really help us create that circle of care. Yeah. And I know that uh, you know you have been talking about through your years of work that you are working on creating documents and things that uh, that patients can actually take from their doctor visits that kind of uh, talk about the exact type of shoes that they might need. So it makes it easier right. for them to come in. Right. Um, okay. Yeah. So what I'll showcase is that in the link tree. Um, what we've done is we put this really cool, and so this is what I've seen a lot of um, our podiatrists use in the clinic room, um, and it kind of showcases the patients, okay, that high arch, that medium arch, and then that low arch, and then the corresponding shoe, and this doesn't showcase all the shoes, but it showcases a fair amount, especially our PDAC approved. So PDAC is just a diabetic approved through Medicare, and I'm sure you guys know that. What's really cool here is that you can see the drop. So if we zoom in on the drop, then we have a lot of our podiatrists circle, whether they want a 13 millimeter drop or whether they want an eight millimeter drop or a four millimeter drop, so it'll explain it there. And just again for the Medicare. 
Um, yeah, so the PDAC is just referring to Medicare, but we send this to all of our medical professionals, especially podiatrists, because it's a really great resource, because a lot of people, they'll go to a shoe store and they get so overwhelmed, right? You see a whole, like, wall of shoes, and they're like, well, how do I know what's going to help me, especially if you're in pain, or you have a sprain, or things like that, it's really important to know. Yeah. So we created that, we put that on the link tree, and that's free for all um, uh, medical professionals. This is the and one then really like. this one has yeah. been very helpful. So um, we have a lot of podiatrists asking us for a shoe list. So what I've done is I've listed it in terms of the category, whether it's um, neutral for high arch, um, stability for medium arch, and then um, flat arch versus motion control. And then I've put the corresponding competitive um, brand's model so that people will know, you know what corresponds to the New Balance one. Um, and then they can hand it off at the clinic. So Yeah, so yeah. I know that that one's actually really, I really like that because um, you know, working with uh, Special Olympics, we yeah. do a program where we do uh, gait analysis for the athletes where we just like, you know, we watch them walk. And it's it's so funny how you can see how just recommending a different shoe type would make a huge difference, huge difference for them. They're happier, they're healthier. Um, it just makes the world of a difference. So like something like that's yes. really great. Um, but again, you know, I want to thank Jenny for uh, inviting us all into the New Balance store to kind of give us a little bit of a rundown. Um, okay, uh, so we have some questions. Wanna... So one question we have from our viewers is that, what kind of shoes would you recommend for different kinds of sports? Yeah, so I was gonna get into that. Um, so for tennis shoes, and you know your lateral movement shoes, like basketball shoes, we can even kind of walk downstairs and show you the latest New Balance basketball shoes. You really want to get sports specific shoes, right? One of the things that I have seen a lot in my 19 years at New Balance, and my sister's done this too, <laughs> is that she's really big into basketball, and she'll take my running shoes and she'll go we'll play basketball, play basketball oh in them. And again, that is a horrendously bad yeah. idea, because running shoes are meant for forward motion, right? It's a very different biomechanical, you know, um, motion. And you guys have a beautiful biomechanics lab that kind of shows you kind of hit, you know, that heel and then you kind of roll into your big toe. It's a forward motion. But with tennis, with a lot of high intensity, um, like CrossFit stuff now, you're constantly turning and pivoting with Zumba. You need to really make sure that you get the appropriate shoe for the sport that you're doing. Um, especially when it comes to tennis, okay, because people will have a lot of rollover sprains, and basketball. Again, we see a lot of people just trying to play with really flimsy running shoes that have no lateral support. So why don't I kind of show you guys some of the cross trainers. So you can see this cross trainer is built specifically for midfoot support. It's holding you on all sides. One of the inspirations behind this was kinesio tape, right? So KT tape. It's really gonna hold you in the midfoot. And then it's very different beveling compared to the running shoes, okay? And then you can see that these are more minimalist, so it's a flatter heel to toe, all right? Um, and you can also go online and see a lot more of our um, options in terms of categories. But one of the most important things I can tell you is yeah. make sure to get the right kind of shoe for the right kind of activity. Otherwise, you know, you don't want to get yourself injured and hurt. <laughs> yeah, we had another question. Um, another question is that what about shoes for patients who have casts? Yeah, so that is really hard. One of the things that we've seen um, is you kind of get um, a, a leg length imbalance because you have the cast and then you have the shoe. So we don't really have shoes specifically to um, change the, the length, but there is another product called Even Up. And so you can put it on your shoe so that it's the even amount of a cast. Because again, you don't want to create more issues. The person's foot's in a cast and then you're creating a leg length imbalance and they're walking around, what, six to eight weeks? And then they have other issues because the whole body is interconnected. So one of the big things that I think you should take away is that the whole body is interconnected, right? So whether you're walking around in an uneven cast, whether you're wearing the wrong size and width, whether you're wearing old shoes or whatnot, especially with kids, we see this all the time with parents. 
they'll buy a shoe that's like three sizes too big because they want Junior to grow into it. But you really want to make sure that you get Junior measured twice a year up until the age of 15. They can twice a year up until Yeah, 15. so it's really important. They have kid size branding at any specialty store. We can throw the kids on the digital scanner and it'll give us the right um, size and width for the child. Um, and again, the mistake that a lot of people make for both themselves and their children is like, oh, I'll just go longer and wider. That's the number one thing I see. Oh, great, we have more questions. What are some common mistakes people make um, when using orthotics? Okay, we were just talking about this. My number one pet peeve, I have a few, but the number one is that they don't remember that their wonderful podiatrist who had spent all this time and energy making this wonderful orthotic, they'll put it on top of the insole. So what you'll want to do is remind the patient, always take the original insole out and put the orthotic in. Another thing that I spend a lot of time and energy um, teaching our staff and our um, staff at the stores is don't overcorrect, right? So you don't want to take a really heavy duty orthotic and put it in a motion control shoe, then they're walking around like Daffy Duck and we don't really want that. So we don't want to overcorrect. And another thing that you need to tell your patients that they don't seem to remember is that um, have a podiatrist um, come and look at the insole every two years. Because the thing that we see all the time is that, you know, customers will come in and they're like, oh, my podiatrist made this for right. me eight years ago. And you're like, you didn't have them look at it again. Yeah. So every one Be or changed. two years, you want your podiatrist to look at it again, to see if you have to recast, do you have to put the new top layer on. And those are all really good questions. So thank you, whoever sent that in. That's wonderful. Yeah. What type of shoes would you recommend to reduce knee pain? So that's a really tricky question. The question was, what shoes do you want to reduce knee pain? Um, I am not qualified to answer that. Um, what we do and what we say, um, a lot of times people will come to our store and they're like, do you think I have plantar fasciitis? And we're like, whoa, 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 whoa. You need to talk to a podiatrist. So the first question I would need to find out from them is what did their podiatrist say um, contributed to the knee pain? Because as you all know, that there's so many different reasons for knee pain. So we need to find out from the podiatrist what caused the knee pain, whether they're going to PT, and is it okay because they have you know, arches that are falling, is it something else? Unfortunately, there's so many reasons why there's knee pain that you know, I'd rather ask a few more questions and specifically ask them, have they talked to their podiatrist? But I think that's an actually important point yeah. that you pick up because it actually talks about the really, uh, the really continuum of care and that's why know, we need to partner up. <laughs> yeah, between your podiatrist and, right. and shoe companies like that so right. that you really get that great final product for the patient so that they have the best fit possible going forward so that they do better, you know? Yeah, and that's the number one thing that I put on my webinars to all of our stores is because people just come here and they think, oh, it's quicker than going to a podiatrist. And they all know to say, look, that is not in our scope of practice. There are many reasons why you could be getting arch pain, heel pain, knee pain, shin pain. There's so many reasons. Talk to your medical professional first before. But one of the things that we'll do is like, if this was a customer, I would say, oh, you know what? Let's check the scanner just to see what's going on. Right. And it could be that they have really either old broken down shoes or their arches are collapsing. Maybe it's an older person and they just didn't realize they needed more support. Or maybe they're on the wrong size and width. I'm telling you about 80% of the time, um, it's that they're in the wrong size or width or they're using too old of a shoe. So those are all great questions, you guys. I love those yeah. questions. Yeah, well, okay, so thank you, Jenny, again, yes. for coming thank down, you guys. inviting us into this really great store. Yeah. We're here at the market. Yeah, uh, New Bell, San Francisco, 856 Market. Yeah, and so uh, just don't forget to keep doing your uh, entries in. We're gonna keep doing this contest until um, the end of next week, and yes. then we'll do the drawing. Very Somebody, exciting. grand prize winner is going to be able to get up there, do the foot scan, get their own pair of shoes to, uh, to go home with them. Uh, three people are going to go home with this shirt, and then two <laughs> winners are going to get a full week's worth of socks. So I think that's yeah, really synthetic great. socks. So yeah. the last tidbit is cotton is run. We do not want to be working out in cotton. No cotton socks. No cotton socks. Or apparel. Yeah. Well, thank you again, Jenny, for coming. Yeah, thanks, we'll Jonathan. be happy that you come back in the spring. We'll yes, talk we're about come back some more. Uh, we'll talk about um, shoelaces, right? Shoelaces, lacing techniques, and more innovations in athletic shoes and fun 
fun things to talk about. All right. Well, thank you so much again for coming in. PodMed Adventures, thank you so much again for uh, tuning in with us. And for those of you starting school next week, good luck. And we'll see you at boards. Take care.